Magic Detective, starring the world's greatest living magician, Blackstone. He tells you the inside story of The Ladder of Wealth. And right after the story, Blackstone will explain tricks that you yourself can perform. Reveal the guarded secrets of the world's greatest living magician. Stand by for Blackstone, the magic detective. Skulls, skeletons, false hands, color-changing roses. Gosh, Blackstone, you've got interesting things here. Collecting magic equipment is a hobby of mine, Don. I've never used a great many of these things in my act, but I like to collect them. And have me catalog them. That's quite a job, I might add. I'll bet it is. Look at that thing over there, Don, and tell me what it is. Well, let me see here. Sort of sloping shelves made of glass arranged sort of like a ladder. Well, I haven't the vaguest idea what it's for. It's a magic coin ladder. Well, what's that? Watch and I'll show you. I'll empty about 50 coins here at the top in this crystal chest. Now, Rhoda, hand me that glass bowl. We'll right. put it right here at the bottom. Now, watch carefully, Don. Magi Kiarum. Watch the coins, Don. There, they're starting to slip down the ladder. Yeah, look at them sliding down those shelves. They, they seem to bounce from one to the other. Hey, look, those coins are multiplying. There's more than 50 of them. Every time they hit another shelf, they increase. Why, they're endless. So old Claverick thought. Well, who's Claverick? Explain to me, Blackstone. Well, it all has to do with Arthur Claverick, Don. While those coins are pouring down the ladder, I'll tell you about it. This is a funny section of the country. We're almost completely isolated here in this little valley, Blackstone. Most of us have lived here for years, and our father's before us. We know all about each other's business. That's why I asked you to come here, Mr. Blackstone. Well, I'm afraid I don't understand, Leighton. Up in the hills behind the village, there used to live a funny old miser. Had a great deal of money in his time, but then he... Went daffy? No, I wouldn't say that. He just didn't trust people, that's all. He lived in a funny old shack with all his money, reputed to be several thousand dollars in gold. And we all let him alone. Well, what happened? Well, a year or so ago, a man named Arthur Claverick moved here. He'd heard an old story or legend that there was a buried treasure in these parts. Gold hidden by some wealthy Tory families during the Revolution. And he just thought he'd come and dig it up, huh? Yeah, so it seems. Well, he hunted and hunted for months, and as far as we know, found nothing. Then the hermit I was telling you about, old Adam Winslow, was found drowned in a mountain stream. Well, what about his money? Yeah, it was never found. We searched his shack, and there wasn't a penny anywhere. What has Claverick got to do with this? Well, shortly after Adam died... He stopped searching. Now he's living in Adam's old shack and has turned into a recluse, too. Did he find his buried money? He won't say. Well, what's your opinion of all this? I think he murdered Adam Winslow and stole his gold. That's quite an accusation, Leighton. Yes, I know it. I want you to find some clue that I can use to prove my suspicions. Do you know this fellow Claverick well enough to ask him to your home? Well, yes, I guess so. Good. Now, here's what I want you to do. I've asked you all here to meet a very dear friend of mine. He has very kindly consented to perform some feats of magic for us. Mr. Blackstone, the magician. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. When I was traveling in the Far East, I heard rumors of a magic ladder that would increase the number of coins that were poured down it. I searched and searched until, finally, I managed to procure one of those ladders. Tonight, for the first time, I'm going to test its magic powers. Rhoda, hand me those coins. Thank you. Now, will someone in the audience count them for me? I will. Oh, my, yes, I'll be glad. Yes, that's clever, Blackstone. Uh Uh-huh. 
Well, here you are, Mr. Claverick. Thank you. Thank you. Now, let me see. Ten cent pieces, I, I see. Yes, indeed. Dimes, lots of them. <laughs> One, two... Uh, Broder, will you bring out the ladder? Uh, here it is, Maestro. Thank you. You see this ladder, ladies and gentlemen? Shelves of glass. I will place the coins in this crystal chest here at the top. They will slide down the shelves, and if the stories of the sages of the East prove correct, they will multiply in number. Uh, have you counted the coins, Mr. Claverick? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed, I have. Fifty of them. Fifty shiny, bright ten-cent pieces. <laughs> here you are, Mr. Blackstone. Thank you. I have here fifty dimes, as Mr. Claverick has said. I place them in this crystal chest, and I say the magic word. Magi Kiarum. And the coins start coming down the ladder. Watch closely, everybody. There, there are more of them. Every time a coin hits a shelf, there, there gets to be two of them. Look, look, there are hundreds of coins dripping down that ladder. Hundreds of them. The stage is right. It's a magic ladder. A ladder of wealth. We can all be rich. Rich. I don't see why you want us to hide here. The moonlight makes it spooky. Yes, Blackstone, it's three o'clock in the morning and all the guests have gone. We've been here for an hour and nothing's happened. Shh, listen. Do you hear something? Uh, hmm? Footsteps. And they're walking over to the coin ladder I left in the other room. Who is it, Blackstone? You wait and see. Somebody's putting coins in the crystal chest. Magi Kiarum. They're multiplying. My gold coins are multiplying. I'll be rich. Rich. Cleverick. What are you doing here, Blackstone? Oh, don't stop the coins. Don't stop them. Look at them. Hundreds of them. Hundreds. Turn on the lights, Leighton. Rhoda, grab the coins. Uh, no. I've got the coins, Blackstone. Oh, they're, they're the coins from the Tory treasure. I found them. I was just doubling them by magic. They're mine. Uh, Give them to me. Give them to him, Rhoda. Oh, thank you. Thank you. My coins. Oh, my precious coins. Count them, Claverick. Be sure they're all there. They will have doubled. Count them. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Uh, Here's another coin on the floor, Blackstone. Good, let me have it. Well, Claverick, all there? One's missing. One's missing. I have it here. The coins were supposed to multiply, and they didn't. Maybe you can't work magic. Multiply my coins, please, Blackstone. It's just an illusion, Claverick. The coins don't multiply. I've been fooled. It was a trick. You made me bring my coins out into the open. My Tory treasure that I never show anyone. Tory treasure, did you say? Yes. The Tory treasure I found. Then how do you account for the fact that the coin I found on the floor was dated 1860? This one here is dated 1873. And this one, 1911. Tory treasure, Mr. Claverick? It's a mistake. A mistake, I tell you. Murder is always a mistake, Mr. Claverick. <laughs> Did Claverick really murder old uh, Adam Winslow? Yes, he confessed, Don. The coins, gold ones, belonged to Winslow, you see. But uh, how did you know they did? Well, that was simple. The dates on them told me they weren't Tory treasure, as he claimed. And also, Winslow was reputed to have gold. Everyone else has turned in the gold when the government requested it. Well, another mystery was solved by magic. But there's still one thing I don't understand. What's that, Don? Well, when you did the magic ladder trick for me, I saw that money double with my own eyes. It's an illusion, Don. Take a good look at the glass shelves of the ladder. Why, every alternate sheet of glass is a mirror. That's right. And as the coins are reflected in the mirror, they give the effect of doubling. When I do the trick myself, I have extra coins hidden behind the bottom mirror that drop into the bowl. I can have members of the audience count them, and see that they actually have increased. Oh, what are those coins I hear now? Uh -oh. Sounds like just three coins to me. <laughs> does this mean a trick? <laughs> yes, it does, Don. And here are the coins. Yeah, a nickel, a quarter, and a penny. What's going to happen with all that cash? Well, we lay the three coins in a row. The nickel, the quarter, the penny. 
Very simple so far. You will also notice that the edges of the coins are touching. That's right. The nickel touches the quarter, and the quarter touches the penny. Yes. Now, the idea is to put the nickel between the quarter and the penny. Rhoda can move the penny, but she can't touch it. Mm -hmm. She can touch the quarter, but she can't move it. She can move the nickel any way she wants. Try it, Rhoda, and see. Well, if she moves the nickel and pushes the penny with it... She'd be touching the penny with the nickel down. That's not allowed. Oh, I'll figure a way to spite you, Blackstone. All right. Go right ahead, Rhoda, and I wish you luck. But if you don't have it... You'll be back to explain why? Absolutely, Rhoda. I'll be back. I've given up, Blackstone. Why, that trick's very simple, Rhoda. A nickel, a quarter, and a penny. All in a row. And I'm to put the nickel between the quarter and the penny. But you can't move the quarter, and you can't touch the penny. I want to know how to do this. Well, here goes. A nickel, a quarter, a penny, in a straight row, edge to edge. I put my right forefinger on the quarter. Good enough. You're touching the quarter, but you mustn't move it, you know. With my left fingers, I slide the nickel to the left, then shove it hard to the right so it strikes the quarter like this. Well, it happened. It really happened. Well, what happened, Rhoda? Blackstone moved the penny without touching it. He was pressing the quarter hard, and when the nickel hit it... Well, look. See, Don? The force of the nickel striking the quarter knocked the penny several inches to the right. Say, so it did. But you're supposed to move the, uh, well, the nickel between the quarter and the penny. That's easy now, Don. We just slide the nickel right between the other coins. And the trick is done. (laughs) Right. I hope you like that trick, ladies and gentlemen. And until next time, this is Blackstone saying good magic and goodbye. with us next time when the world's greatest living magician, Blackstone, tells us the story of The Lock Book and explains more tricks that you yourself can perform. Listen in again to Blackstone, the world's greatest living magician. (laughs) 